Oh! Ah, and we're live. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, we're about to Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't uh, know what's going on. Let's share this thing around before we start diving into all the bullshit. We, yes, we, sir. So much has happened since the last podcast. I'm quite you know, surprised. It's like as soon as we don't do a podcast, everything happens. Which it's um, honestly fantastic because then it's just chock full of stuff that we can go over. And oh, I love it. I just, I just love being like, oh. I can finally talk about all this shit that's been piling up. Ugh. Piling up. I mean, that's that's really what it is. It's 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 just every single day something crazy happens. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you can't yeah, keep up. Oh my god. Um. Okay. Yes. Um. We could start with. Uh, do we start with sad news? Where do oh. we go? Rest in peace, Daredevil. <laughs> Rest in peace. Luke Cage and Iron Fist. You know, it just it just saddens my heart that doing so well and having a streaming service come up that they would be canceled like this. You know, it just it breaks my. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I sat there. I'm trying. I think someone tagged me and you, or at least mm-hmm. Electric Brit Smash, and said, "Did you guys know that Daredevil's like Daredevil was not canceled?" Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. I scroll up on my timeline, and it goes. Daredevil canceled. Okay. Oh, why? Okay, I understand Iron Fist because season one was not re- received well, and Iron Fist season two was a better improvement, but there wasn't much response. Right. Luke Cage. Okay, it's not getting mm. the numbers. Daredevil, the flagship, the thing that has had three great seasons, not one mediocre and add two. No, three, and you're canceling that show. <clears throat> before Jessica Jones. Well, I mean, Jessica Jones season three is going to come out. They're going to yep. cancel it like a month later. Yep. Punisher season two, same deal. I mean, I think this is Netflix's response to Disney going, we're going to make our own streaming service. And Netflix is like, well, we're done with your contracts. I bet the contract has a certain extent to where they had mm-hmm. to, because they had to get the defenders out yeah. at a certain point. And then after yeah. that, I think it's like, you know, season by season. Right. Um, It's pretty depressing that we we're losing daredevil and we're going to lose everything else it's it's i much. just i just think we have so much planned for our, they have so much planned for us there's no way that they would bridge the gap out of nowhere by giving us loki scarlet witch bucky uh mm. bucky falcon team up there's no way that they would come and bridge the gap with tv series and not give us tv series heroes a chance on the big screen yeah, I mean, well, it, well, apparently last night they're coining it as Vision and the Scarlet Witch is going to be the TV series. Oh. Um, which I, which for me, it's like, wait, okay, Scarlet Witch was in the discussion. Now you're putting Vision into the mix, and he's the the first billion. It used to be Scarlet Witch and the Vision, so that it's her That's story. Cool. But I'm thinking, is this a prequel or spoilers for Avengers Four? And people are like, it's probably a prequel. I'm like, yeah. Mm. Because, yeah, so they're just going to go back, which is totally awesome because we're just going to get more <laughs> screen time with Loki and then those two. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the fact is we have a whole span of time between Civil War and Avengers Infinity War where Scarlet Witch and Vision were on the run, but maybe stuff happened right. that we don't know about. It's true. It's you don't true. have to. Do they s- ran into Dracula. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just <laughs> it's carried over it's carried over because, yeah um we were playing all right so full disclosure keeping this real really quick there is a game that is not associated whatsoever with nazis but it is literally called secret hitler and the game is basically you're just supposed to find you have liberals and then you have fascists and then you have hitler and the fascist job is to um make hitler the chancellor and it's just it's just basically a game of of subterfuge, of, of sabotage, and it, that's it's only called that. It's there's no, it has nothing to do with it. It's just called that, and those are the names given. Everything else has to do with just being sneaky and tricking everybody. But I was being particularly evil last night, so it was just like, <laughs> 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 yeah. So now it is carried over to today, where I am continuing the evil. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, oh dear God, but. 
I honestly sat there and I saw people and like, yeah, exactly. I was like, Daredevil's not canceled. I got tagged in that. And then I look and I see fans, a, a frenzy over Daredevil being canceled. I'm like, all right, there's, there's no way in hell. There's no way. Exactly. And you're actually absolutely right. Three incredible seasons. Like you can't just, and especially with the buildup that season three has that I haven't even seen yet. Because this shit's been ridiculous, <laughs> but um, I just I, I it blows my mind. And if if they roll in, like you know, everybody's already apprehensive about streaming services in general. It's like I already pay for Netflix, <laughs> meaning somebody pays it for me. I just get on it. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <in my account. laughs> um, well, I already have Netflix. I don't need another fucking... Or I have Hulu. I have Netflix. I don't need another streaming service. But then Disney's going to be like, hey, we're going to ro roll out of the fucking park with fucking um, Heroes for Hire, Daredevil Season 4. And you can't just be like, oh, whatever. And then they're like, oh, by the way, those uh, the series with the big-time actors that were in the movies, we got those too. I mean... Yeah, that's the I think that's a big slap in the face to Netflix. Netflix had to like build up their shows with characters who have not been on in the MCU. <laughs> and Disney comes on and goes, um, Bob Iger, the president of Disney, comes on a, a conference call and goes, "Hey, uh, we're doing a Loki show." Tom Hiddleston tweets out, uh, "Loki Loki show's coming." Then like Vision, the Scarlet Witch, we're doing. It. And apparently, there's rumors Gru and Rocket's gonna have their own show. And then it's like, oh, also, we got Star Wars. We got the Clone Wars Season 7. We got uh, we got Star Mandal Wars The Mandalorian live action with Jon Favreau producing with big top directors, Taika Waititi. We have uh, Dave Filoni, who's been shepherding all the animated stuff, directing. Um, we also have a Kasdian prequel to Rogue One. We're also going to have other – we're going to have live-action exclusive original Disney shows and Disney movies coming. Yeah, that's exactly – I was telling – okay, I was talking with my boss. Uh, I talk with him a lot in the morning because we work in the mornings together, and we just fucking shoot the shit about this. And, yeah, what I, that's exactly right. I even forgot what I was even fucking talking about. I was like, Disney fucking is rolling out like, ha, ha. Ha, ga, 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 gotcha. Because they're like, <laughs> hey, hey, you like Star Wars? We got fucking Star Wars. It's like, you like fucking Marvel? We got fucking Marvel. It's like, Jesus MCU Christ. MCU quality shows. They'd be as quality as the movies shows. That's, okay. Uh, okay. I personally love Rogue One and I love Cassian and K2SO. Yeah. And I, it's just, it's always saddens me that there's no way, there's no way that we can ever get a Rogue One series because. They were only the team for that little period of time. But then you get to see the birth of the rebellion via Kazdian and K2SO. Basically, they haven't confirmed K2SO, but you know they're going to have K2SO. I, mean, I, I feel like in some limited capacity because they just gotta because yeah, it's too good. But it's, it's like that's if you look at it too. So Disney does this announcement that they're officially doing the streaming service last year, and now we're getting mm -hmm. into. Well, no, actually, earlier this year, and now we're getting into where we're about a year away from the streaming service launching or so. Netflix is, like, buying up everything they can to compete. I mean, Jesus they got Christ, Avatar, yeah. The Last Airbender, live-action retelling with the original creators back. They, they've got that new Sabrina the Teenage Witch show that oh, apparently right. is oh, getting a lot of praise. Well, yeah. Yeah, and then you look at also they got uh, from Warner Brothers that Mowgli film they were doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so – <laughs> and Netflix keeps acquiring new properties, and they get Chronicles of Narnia stuff. They're going to do shows and movies based off those. God, I love the Chronicles. They're just buying up everything that they can before Disney, because Disney's going to—I don't think Disney's going to destroy Netflix, but Disney's going to come out swinging with live-action canon Star Wars, live-action MCU shows with the actual actors from the movies. And they're bringing back Clone Wars, which is a big show, <laughs> and they're doing Lady and the Tramp live-action remake exclusive for it. And then they keep announcing shit. They're not. They're not fucking around. It, it's just insane because, as we both know, and we've talked about it multiple times, Star Wars is just that generation. Um, that could, it's that series that can grab any generation, right? Because what you have right now is you have the current movies, which so that'd be Cassian. That would be your like people that like the current movies or what they're bringing out. Like, oh fuck, that's that. Awesome. I'm one of those. And then we have fucking the Mandalorian. Everybody that fucking loves Boba Fett is gonna be like, "Oh shit!" Like this is around, you know, not, I, I, not exactly not him, 
but it's based on the race of people that he's from so he's going to be equally badass we hope um and then you just you come out of the gate so yeah exactly you're exactly right come of the gate swinging um but i mean it's insane how when you scroll through netflix now how many little originals you see now like netflix mm -hmm. originals like they, they, they yeah, are they're, they're dropping everything well, they can it's like and then they have the haunting of hill house too like they have some Such some show. they have growing series on their own and then these heavy hitters yeah they're going to be losing the mcu but they have they still have stuff that they're building up they still have stranger uh, things they still have oh, exactly, exactly. um I, I've never seen it, but I've heard Ozark is a good show. Um, oh, yeah. uh, House of Cards was a heavy hitter, but then the whole controversy, and then season six, the final season, kind of got crapped on. Um, what else? I mean, they did have the Marvel shows, but they, they're canceling them left and right. right. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of virtual stuff, but also think of this too. There's a lot of Disney animated stuff on there in the MCU films. All those are going to be taken off. Oh, uh, yeah. And because Disney's going to be like, nope, they're going to be on our streaming service. That's like, true. Netflix is getting Infinity War on Christmas Day, but that's going to be pulled because as soon as the Disney streaming service is about to launch Disney Plus, they're like, nope, you can't have it no wow. more. If you want to watch all of our stuff, which we own everything, <laughs> you're going to come subscribe to Disney Plus. And I'm like, take my money now. <laughs> I want the Mandalorian. I want a Loki <laughs> show. I really hope that that Bucky and – that Winter Soldier and Falcon team up is real because I really because they haven't officially confirmed that. I really hope that's real because I really want that. For I sure. I don't know like I, when after Civil War came out, it was just like, can I get more of these guys, please? The, their <laughs> banter is so good. The it's whole so thing. Good. Can you move? Can you move your seat? No. <laughs> Could have done that earlier. Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So yes, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, streaming service talk. <laughs> but uh, uh, well, it all right. stemmed out the fact that Netflix is like cutting ties with Marvel. Yeah, yeah. It's just oh god, I love this tangent. <laughs> just, uh, the guy, who sh the guy, I don't know because I think the showrunners change a lot, but the showrunner for season three, Daredevil, like pitched season four, mm. like a, like a couple days before it got canceled. Mm. So it's like I don't think Netflix even. I don't think Netflix wanted to do a season four. I think once they, because everything, because you go back to 2017 when they did Comic Con, they had the Defenders panel because the show wasn't out till August, so they had a panel and yeah. they announced season three was currently filming and season two of uh, Luke Cage and, and yeah. season, um, well, no, season two of Jessica Jones was still filming. Yeah, but season two of Iron Fist. At that point, there was no official word of a streaming service from Disney. So like, okay, we're just gonna keep moving. They announced Jessica Jones season three pretty quick after season two. Yeah. But then we saw where it's like daredevil's been out for a couple weeks and there's nothing. That's not a good sign. Uh, and then they mm. axed it. <laughs> Got rid of it. With the balloon ax. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Very effective. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, what else? Uh, we covered a lot there. Um, yes. <laughs> Elseworlds. Let's let's talk about Elseworlds. Fantastic. Yes. So. Holy uh, Jesus. So we watched all the promos. We were gonna react to the last one, but then we didn't realize that it was a very short and like chopped up uh, promo because there was the four, which is basically Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, and then Batwoman. Yeah. Like that, that was, and then, and then they had like the comprehensive one, but it still was just, just like this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Oh Jesus! So, um, I and oh, God, I just I can't believe some people. The fact that we can come to this point, and the fact mm -hmm. that that DC has been so stingy on having anything related to Batman on TV for a long time, the fact that we're even getting this, that it opens up this door. There's so many more possibilities. It's like, how can you not be at least a little excited for this? I mean, you can have your opinions about Arrow, you can have your opinions about The Flash, but um, the fact that this universe has come to this point where we are, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. How you can have how you can have Barry Allen and Oliver Queen switch bodies and, and all these people from their different shows, like oh, it's so it's, good. It's so it's, it's so good. It's magic. It's what it is. Yeah. Cause like I'm sitting there going, 
how in the hell are you going to top Dominators? Crisis on Earth X tops is it, no question. How are you going to top Crisis on Earth X? Okay, well, first of all, we're going to switch Oliver and Barry's roles to where they're both, where Barry's the Green Arrow and Oliver is the Flash. Batwoman, we're going to say Batman. We're going to Gotham City. We're bringing back Superman. We got a black suit of Superman. We got the Monitor. We got Nora Freeze. What in the <laughs> fuck is going on? Oh, yeah, so I'm playing in, in the Clark Kent farm for Smallville. But besides all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, also, by the way, that lifelong dream that you were talking about, about Superman beating Green Arrow and Flash, it might, it might, it might, it might be happening. Happen. <laughs> oh, the original Flash from the 90s show, John West, back in the original fucking suit. Just saying. <laughs> Jesus, seriously, like, Jesus Christ. Like, they're what? like, hey. What are, they gonna do? what are they gonna do next year? We're bringing back, uh, we're bringing back Tom Welling is from Smallville, and he's gonna play Superman again. We're gonna have uh, Michael Rosenbaum come back as Lex Luthor. We're gonna have Dark Side. I don't fucking know. Um, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Dark Side. Um, check this shit out. So here we're gonna go. Well, again, Huntress is coming back. Huntress. And Laurel's gonna join her. What, <laughs> and then we're gonna. Earth, have Earth One Laurel, who died, is back from the dead during a right. timeline loop from like Flashpoint 2.0 from Barry. Laurel, she's gonna have all the buckles and shit. Fuck yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you love those buckles, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and then Mon El's gonna come back. He's gonna bring the Legion of Superheroes with him. Yes. We're gonna have Martian Manhunter actually be in the crossover as Martian Manhunter. Man um Jesus. Uh um, oh god. Yes. So following all of this crossover, we're gonna have a birds of prey show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna bring over the Titans from the from the DC Universe show. We're gonna bring them over. We're gonna bring their Batman. We're gonna bring their Jason <laughs> Todd. Batman. We're gonna bring their Donna Troy. <laughs> we're gonna bring over the Doom Patrol. We're gonna bring over Swamp Thing. The yeah, Legends are gonna right. pop up. <sighs> Could you imagine though if they did like a a five? Let's say it's it. Yeah, five would be five show. Yeah. Well, yeah. if 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 Batman Batwoman gets a show mm. and they. It would be like fucking the three Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, and then and then oh. Batwoman, and then Black Lightning comes out of fucking nowhere. Ga, ga, oh. Ga. <laughs> Didn't see that one well, coming, did you? Oh. I'm thinking logistically why they kept Legends out. I think due to the fact that Supergirl has her like like all the three shows have their own leads besides Legends. You got yeah. Green Arrow, Flash, and Supergirl. Right. Legends, they're all kind of main leads, so. It's like trying to figure out um, logistically who gets more screen time because Crisis right. on Earth X is not perfect because there's characters omitted for the majority of it. Oh, yeah. It's practically impossible. So yeah. they're yeah. like, okay, let's do three nights. Let's do Batwoman. Let's bring back Superman. Let's introduce Lois Lane because they first announced Batwoman. I'm thinking, right. okay, we're going to go Gotham. They're going to shorten it down three shows. We're going to have Batwoman pop up. It's going to be something Gotham City. No, we're doing Elseworlds. We're going to have the Monitor. We're going to have North Freeze. We're going to have Superman, Black Suit Superman. Uh, and they were switching bodies. Like They yeah. really destroyed the whole expectations of, oh, it's a smaller story than Batwoman. No, it's way no. more than just. So I wonder what this is going to do because is this going to, like, alter something for the shows moving forward because some people are saying that that book that's being used to alter oh, yeah. reality what if that alters earth one and 38 supergirl and then everyone else's earth into one what if they do that remember when we were thinking of that i mean i remember when we thought about that and mm -hmm. we're like what if uh christopher x mer merges them for something mm -hmm. like no 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 they wouldn't do that but now but, they have no. something that could do it yeah, they have something that could do it. They have the thing is like, um, it would be such an interesting twist, especially with the place that Supergirl is in right now with their their storyline that they're going with. Mm. And you, the 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 point that you brought up last time was the fact that aliens exist on Earth thirty eight and people know about it, and now they're in a state of hating aliens, which is it's an interesting storyline to. It's divide. It's di it's. I think it's dividing National City, but it's also dividing. I think the whole world because you know you got to think it's not just National City that's affected by this whole idea of yeah. agents of liberty. I bet it's all over America. People are like, well, yeah, aliens are bad, or like, aliens yeah. are okay. There's, it's a whole. Um, but yeah, that would that would drastically change 
Earth One if they merged it because then now everyone knows yeah about what's going on a Supergirl. I don't know. I don't know if it'd be the smart yeah. move. Yeah, that that's the only interesting thing about that because the fact that they're so heavy handed in the alien issue this time around, Supergirl. That's why it would be interesting. But I mean, God. But then uh, that would knows? also destroy the potential of a alternate Oliver on Kara's Earth. Ah. Or something, because if you remember when Barry went to her Earth by accident, which is a great accident, by the way, um, he searches and there's no Star Labs, there's no, um, there, well, there was no, um, oh God, Harrison Wells, oh, but he didn't search up Oliver, he didn't search up anybody else, like specific, yeah. he only specifically searched up his side of stuff. So, I mean, if down the road they wanted to do an alternate. Oliver Queen for some reason they could introduce that on like, Supergirl. Yeah. The only time he's like, he's like, she's like, who are you? And like, I'm the Flash. Who? Uh, yeah. What? You, you don't know Green Arrow? She's like, who? So that's the only time he mentions. That yeah, to her. Arrow. But um, I think there's a Kara and a Clark Kent on Earth One that have not revealed themselves, and I think they're completely different people. They're not the same actors. I think. Right. Earth One has a Superman and a Supergirl that have just not revealed themselves. So if they merge, that ruins that possibility if they wanted to do something like that to where on Earth mm -hmm. One, a, a man emerges and claims he's Superman and it's a different actor and they could do that. Mm. Um, well, because Oliver does have a kryptonite arrow. Where did he get that kryptonite? Where the fuck did he get it? You'll never know. I don't. It, they, they never explain it. You have a kryptonite yeah. arrow? That's what I'm thinking. How the fuck did you get that? He's like, well, he's like, well, you told me last crossover to get one, so here we are. Well, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like, it, I'm guessing it, it says that Kry Krypton always explodes on every Earth or mm. every universe. Kryptonite does explode, and so if he has Kryptonite, that means Superman does exist or yes. Supergirl. So that's, man, that's a big oof on every yeah. universe. Your planet dies. And Krypton <laughs> always explodes every universe. I, I bet Clark is going to at one point go, I wonder if there's an, I wonder if there's a universe that I could go to that it doesn't explode. Nope, bro. That's the one constant thing. It always yeah. explodes. It's going to be, it's the best because it's like, um, every earth, there are two, um, finite things or two, like things that are certain. Bruce's parents die. Mm -hmm. And Krypton explodes. <laughs> and the Batman and Superman are like, come on! Someone answered the like, question. Wait, Bruce! <laughs> yeah, no. Someone did. A, someone answered the uh, question, how do you get Kryptonite Arrow? He said the writers gave him that. Yeah, that's right. Ah. The writers just gave it to him. You mean how they also, the, when Iris is like, hey, how do I do super speed? The writers are like, you got this. Oh, got it. Yeah, so she starts running like magic. Like she instantly yeah. knew. And then, um, and, then, and then she has the audacity to tell Nora how to do it. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was a cool bonding moment. Now we're getting to more. What the <laughs> fuck does Iris know about this shit? She's only did it for one episode. Barry's been doing it for four fucking seasons now, but let's just talk to mom about it. <laughs> He's like, uh, okay, it's only because I heard Brittany uh, editing it, and I heard that part where she's like, but mom, how do I do it? I'm like, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know <laughs> but no she kind of knows but yeah. still the, i was like I was like the writers the writers have to run that now um i had this theory and i want to run it by you okay okay so supergirl season one we reference mm. superman we never really see him we see his boots at one point in season one but that's it you don't see him in season two they introduce him if since they're explaining batman has disappeared it's for the plot it's just written that way he's yeah. That explains why he's not around. Yeah. Um, do you think if a Batwoman show does happen, Batman at some point could pop up? I think with the state of the movies and the state of the the six okay, the state of the movies and the success of Titans, mm. DC's like, hmm, it seems like people enjoy when we do Batman related content besides the movies. Mm. It's like yeah. you know. Fucking say, <laughs> just like, do it. So I think, um, what? Well, so first of all, we got to get our uh, our reaction to Batwoman. They DC has to see CW. DC has to see our reaction to Batwoman, and then, yep. like we've been talking about, they'll probably go forward with the series if she is received well. And from that point, I think 
the idea of having members of the Bat family there is a high possibility. But I think that Batman would just still have to be further down the line as much as I hate to say it. And then... Yeah, because, I mean, Gotham's on the air, and they're claiming Batman does show up in the finale, which is 10 right. years after the events of the Season 5 yeah. episodes. Um, but, yeah, I I mean, there, it's a probability uh, Batman shows up on Titans, but yes. no one will answer the question because it's a spoiler. But yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Batman pops up on Titans, and I won't be surprised if Batman pops up at some point. Now, what I think they'll probably do, they'll probably have Batwoman have her own show, Oracle might be a thing, so if Barbara Gordon's in it, that'd be interesting. <laughs> and yeah. they might do Stephanie Brown, Batgirl, working alongside Batwoman. Okay. Because you have Green Arrow, you have Arsenal, you got Flash, Kid Flash. Mm-hmm. Supergirl doesn't have a protege, but Batwoman could have a Batgirl, not, not Barbara, and then they could introduce maybe Damian Wayne. They can introduce his, the, the sun. Oof. They could um, – it, it all depends on what Earth. If it's Earth 1, they could do this stuff because it was not referenced on air or anything. But, I mean – and this would be a way for them to bring back Talia. If it's on Earth 1, oh, Talia yeah. Agul. Talia mm. Agul. Um, they could also do Huntress 2 if they wanted to. Um, <sighs> and here's the thing. If, they're, if they do Batwoman – Arrow has the more likely possibility for those sh- those shows to yeah, interact right. with each other yeah, because yeah, they're the both the dark shows, um, right? So yeah, um, Peter Parker. Peter, really? with that. This oh, is when you, this is when you decide to start playing with this one. He's this is under the bed for like who knows how long, and then he's like, yeah. mm, better pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. A little squeezy, the squeaky tooth ball. Um, yeah. But I think we have man. Please, I'm just you know my love for Nightwing has never failed, but it's just been so little of him. It's just sad. But someone mentioned I, Tim Drake too. Yeah, I could see that. Tim happen. Drake, mm-hmm. absolutely. I mean, are you watching Titans right now? Or are you waiting until the whole s- series is done, then you'll start watching? I'm waiting and then. Okay, I won't tell you, but uh, Nightwing's coming. I'm not, that's all I'm telling you. That's Nightwing. It. He is coming. They've. It's not confirmed, but we all know it's coming. Hey, you know when. You're eating Thanksgiving dinner, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, this is pretty good. Yep. And then later on, you come home from, from work or something. And you're like, man, I'm really hungry. Man, I don't want to buy food, though. And you open the fridge. You're like, oh! And you see all the leftovers from there. And you're yeah. like, ah, this is it. That's what Titans and Daredevil Season 3 are for me. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> so if, you two are, if you two are waiting for the show to complete, mm-hmm. that's a smart move. Because there are moments in like this last episode. They end... On a cliffhanger, and I'm like, you fucks. Okay. And then I have to wait. Oh, so here, the beauty is that literally that first Comic Con trailer was so divisive and it was dividing yeah. people. That trailer does not do this show justice. Uh, the show, it, it, there's people commenting on my reaction saying, this is the best show right now for DC. Wow. And I'm thinking, a first season of a show, people are saying this compared to like Flash or Arrow or whatever. They're saying, oh, this is better. This is clearly a better show. And I think it's due to the fact that there's no filler. There's no um, there's no real thing where they're doing a, a villain of the week situation. Now, you might get that aspect in a certain episode, but it's like literally they're introducing characters and they're continuing the story of building these the, the Titans, building up this team, building mm-hmm. up these relationships. It's a phenomenal ride, and I'm really digging it. Wow. And there's references that are make you go, wait, they can say this, but they can't say this. Mm -hmm. So the Arrowverse can't say this, but this show can like, yeah, because DC Warner Brothers is controlling this. Yeah. You know, fucking hell. That's uh, I cannot. I'm serious. Like you sucker. He bite Um, you. No, I, I I was trying to grab the ball and he was biting down on the ball. And so, oh, okay. He got me. Because he's trying to get this little ball, aren't you, boy? Oh. But, um, yes. I meant to ask you, how do you like the flash forwards on Arrow right now? Oh, okay, hold on. Okay, yeah. okay, hold, hold on, on. boy. Because hold on, boy. his boy is in the flash forwards, and I'm sitting there, and I saw the reaction of the first episode when that they, they reveal who it is at the end. I think you caught on when he got hit in the head. But yes, yes. I didn't catch on. I'm like, who the fuck is that? 
But you instantly were like, hey, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my boy <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I know that is. Okay, so. Uh, yes, real quick. Let's see. Yeah, I can. Yeah, seriously, cannot wait to get started on Titans and see where the Grayson grows into and then what Jason Todd uh, seems like in the show. But well, yes. Yeah, they, they portray him pretty well. Yes. Uh, that's what I've been hearing. I'm, I'm excited. But when I realized um, what they were doing, to me, at, at this from these episodes, what got me through is the incredible work that Stephen Amell did in the prison and the... I just I gotta give it credit to the writers because that is genius. To take something that got so tired um, in season four and it was just whatever in season five and then just totally out of it in season six, to bring back a concept like that and revamp it to be forward, that's something like I, I remember what, like reading something where it's like, oh, you know, it's really cool to have shows like uh, Legend of Tomorrow and Flash that have the ability to go back or go forward, blah, 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 and revisit these times and stuff like that. They have, they're, they're very unique in that aspect. Arrow just took everybody's expectations and threw it out the window. It's like, hey, guess what, motherfuckers? We can go forward, too. <laughs> yeah, the whole, because the whole point is people are speculating, what is his role in season seven? He, oh, he clearly, he just comes back to help because Oliver's in prison. Yes. Clearly. They're yeah. like, uh, fuck no, he don't. He's in the future, <laughs> and he helps William. But which, by the way, they actually made William likable in the future because William in the present. Ugh. Yeah. But they bring in Roy, and then okay, so some people. The only thing that I guess people have an issue with in terms of flash forwards is the fact that it does spoil some characters because yeah. you know Dinah's not going to die, you know Zoe's not going to die, die. Yeah. you know. Roy's alive, you know William's alive, and they claim Felicity is dead. Dead. Is yeah. she dead? I don't believe it, but yeah, definitely not. See, um, fine. But what I think is interesting is that there's some characters that they're clearly omitting for reasons, and I think this hints. Well, I mean, they said that Wild Dog he wouldn't be caught dead in the city, so he's not going to come back. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Unless there's a story point down the road where they do bring in him, but they're indicating they're not even referencing. Diggle, Oliver, mm. Curtis, yes. uh, Laurel. They're not saying anything. They're like, ah, who knows? I think Oliver's alive in the future. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. I think they're holding that off until they really need to use him. Mm -hmm. But I'm loving what they're building up to. I like the whole idea of the Glades taking over. I like the idea that, you know, things are what they seem. And people complain, oh, well, it just spoils that Green Arrow, the team, they never, they never accomplish anything because the Glades are taking over. It's like, do you expect at a certain point everything's gonna be happy hunky dory? That's never yeah, the case. Yeah, yeah. Never. No. Um it's called superhero show. There's always bad guys. It's like it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the balance. Light rises, darkness rises to meets it. That's the whole concept. So when everything's fine, hunky dory, guess what? Something else rises up to counter that. Someone's gonna be planning something. Um yeah. did you see did you see the death stroke mask? Uh that was like uh, crossed out on the highway. I love like, it. So oh. good. So fucking cool. Dude, I, I, I know that it's obviously not Manu Bennett because it's probably his son that's probably being the new Deathstroke like in the 2024 Legends episode or 2046. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah uh -huh. that's fine. I just want Manu Bennett back as Deathstroke. Dude, great. The the whole white hair, like that old oh. slate from Teen Titans. Old Holy slate. Jesus. Oh, shit. Please, can you do that? That would be insanity. I know. And, and what if he's actually working with them instead of being the villain, but he's working with them to fight back the forces in the glades? Like that would be Could you imagine? Roy Deathstroke yes. <laughs> working together. Roy, Roy is in his own green arrow, red outfit, yes. arsenal tradition. He's older, got the beard, he's wiser, working with Deathstroke. Taking on fucking dudes like nothing. Working with that. Uh, you, the best part you, is that was he ever aware of his like Roy? I don't think was really aware of Deathstroke's group, bro. Sit down, bro. Knock it off. Come here, bro. <laughs> I don't think Roy was like aware of Deathstroke's kind of like turnaround because it happened in the finale. Roy obviously yeah. wasn't there, and then it happened when Oliver went with Deathstroke for those three episodes. Um, and he wasn't aware of that, so I think he just like when he would meet him, be like, Slade, like, 
<laughs> easy <laughs> now. Easy now, boy. <laughs> easy now, boy. Stabs Roy in the face. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Whoa. Do you, do you think that uh, Dinah does not have her canary cry in the future because she hasn't used it? She's um, only been hand to hand combat. Right. I think. Uh, I think she still has it. I hope I so. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's my hope. But when when Roy took out those arrows and fired them at those yeah. tennis balls that were on the wall, oh, so good, it so cool, so cool. What my initial thought was that. William, I love how also they got us. They got us twice. They're like, "Oh, you thought Roy was gonna come back and help Oliver? No, it's flash forwards. Oh, you thought that Roy was gonna be the new Green Arrow? No, it's like, oh fuck." <laughs> I know because the new Green Arrow is is clearly a female. It's not a male, mm. but the, they're but they're throwing us curveballs by having the new Green Arrow do flips randomly to make you go, "Oh, it's Roy." Yeah, no, it ain't. <laughs> that was so true. He's like, oh, yeah. "Look at those flips." There's only one oh, person who can do those. Roy Harper. Roy's our boy. Yes, Ray. And I, I gotta say, I got the new showrunner for Arrow Best Schwartz is like wiping the floor with Mark Guggenheim and Wendy Merkel's direction. Best Schwartz is destroying their whole idea of we're gonna make Arrow a balanced show. No, this thing's dark 24-7. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's ridiculously good. I yeah, love it. When they were doing interviews saying Beth likes dark storylines, I'm like, well, I guess we'll see. And then we start seeing it. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, the whole, like, therapy with Oliver oh, yeah. in the prison, that was that was. So and then when he's like, my name is Oliver Queen. Yeah. My name is Oliver Queen. I'm like, so yeah, sick. you are. Yeah. It, but yeah. I can't believe people still complain. Oliver's, Oliver's, that, he's acting like Batman. That's why we love him. Because they made him Batman, he's so good. He's, he's imagine if he was a quippy guy. Like it would, it would just be, it would just ruin the show. It just wouldn't feel right. Oh, that's another thing. So real quick, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Just yeah, people that hate on it and they they have the right to do it. But just the fact that you gotta the, the cultural significance of these two shows, Flash and Arrow. Uh, I mean, of course, other shows are are decent, they're good, but the fact that these two came out and we have Batman and Superman, right? Those are the, the two like well-known duo slash kind of rivals sometimes. Of the, Polar of, opposites, of the, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To give us two Green Arrow is a little like more... Flash is like... People know Flash, but Green Arrow not so much, right? The mm -hmm. fact that they've given this two characters out of nowhere, they've risen, and they've become what we think about now. When you think about DC, like, oh yeah, Batman and Superman, Flash, Arrow, yeah. Those guys. And the fact that in the comics they were never like that, mm. like th that's the best part. I've like seen posts about people posting about how oh, this is what they really like, and it just shows them not getting along, not liking each other. And then in Rebirth they actually had like a nice little crossover. But uh, the fact that they've given us these two characters that are kind of icons now, it's insane. It's insane to me. So I, I, I do, I, I do like Stephen Amell. I do like him as Arrow. I actually been, was rewatching some Arrow and just like, so good. This is what it's about. And the fact is they kept surprising us. So we're sitting there going, okay, who's going to be in the prison stuff? And it's like, oh, Brick, Stardust. We have Bronze Tiger. Bronze Tiger! Oh, when he was like, when he yeah. was like, when, uh, when Oliver's getting beaten the shit out of and all of a sudden it's just like, Bronze Tiger. Boom, boom. It's like, whoa. We just oh, yeah. Oh, sir. So you're caught up with Sorry. everything. Okay. <laughs> so you've seen the Slab Side Redemption, the final, yes. the last episode. Okay, make sure. Because yeah. I'm sitting there going, it's just 40 minutes of fight sequences. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. And, I mean, let's be honest. Diaz in Season 6 wasn't written that well. I think they're writing him a lot better. Yeah. Bombo Hunters. Uh, um, dude, he fucking – he, he kick-flipped Oliver into his cell – if you watch yeah. it, when he kicks him, he yeah. does a flip in the air and hits the. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. And then a big continuity error. Oliver and Felicity start to embrace each other. They zoom out, and Diggle's gone. He's a speedster now. Yeah, that's what, what, I said. what the this? fuck? <laughs> Dear, you remember what we said when uh, they're. Oliver's getting out of prison and they 
him and Felicity embrace, and then all of a sudden it pans out. And Diggle's gone. <laughs> he just fucking, go. he's just gone. <laughs> I love it he's because it's a, it's a clear, it's a clear, it's a clear CGI prison. Because like when yeah. they, but it's but it's like couldn't just animate Diggle <laughs> right, right there. No, just a guy standing there with his hands on the hips yeah. going them two. Oh yeah, wait, they're cool. fucking they, they're fucking up a crime scene here, like making out in front of people trying to figure out what the hell's going on, and they fucked up a wedding a couple episodes back. Oh, you know. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's just a it's just a wedding. Uh, you know, there are some I, I well, okay. There's some people oh god, I can't believe this. I came across some people on Twitter who were listing uh, reasons why they're not gonna watch Elseworlds. Yeah, I saw you mention that. <sighs> Okay, so Lana might not be in it, so I'm not going to watch it. Lana Luther. Supercorp is possibly the worst. That, I that that, that, that and, and that's and that's Supergirl and Lana Luther being together, right? Yes, yes. They always want yeah. to uh, include Supergirl and Lana Luther going to be together. I'm like, uh, no, no, yeah, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I think somebody has something to say on this matter. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Uh oh. Hold on. Let me. Sorry. Let me. <laughs> no, please. Because I'm just baffled by the whole idea. People are like, well, Linda Luther's not going to be in the crossover, so I ain't going to fucking watch it. Well, that's your loss then. Okay. So I'm all for shipping whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. It's none of my business. Freedom of thought, freedom of speech. Ship what you want. I get it. I'm a fangirl. I know this. I understand this. Mm. The line I draw, right? Mm. The line I draw is. Even if it's not writingly like canon that it's going to happen, of course you can still ship something. But you've got to have a sense of, you know, reality. You're watching this show who's at least giving you these amazing characters because Lena's a great character and Kara is a great character. You're watching these characters for a reason that didn't start originally with just a ship. You can watch it for shipping reasons, even if they're not canon or it's not going to happen. We don't know. But... That can't be the only reason now that you watch it. But at the same time, thank the show for even making these characters. If you decide not to watch the damn crossover just because Lena's not in it, that's kind of that's kind of petty. I get it. You want your faves in there. It's a huge event. I completely understand that. But you're going to not support your actors that are on this show, bringing down viewing ratings that help them be able to do this next year, all because you don't have one character who's not going to be in it, that says something. Because what happens next year for the crossover, we can have Lena in. What says that about next year? And if you decide not to watch it and not support, all the support, all the viewership goes towards next year. All the ideas, all the support that we have, we are the ones who drive the shows to keep going. <laughs> To some degree, you know, yeah. we, we have to support it in order for the show to continue to potentially give you what you want. As far as ships, you got to accept the reality that sometimes ships don't happen the way you want to. It's shitty. It hurts your soul. But it's not when it comes to the show. It's not the driving factor of the show unless you're watching a romance comedy. Then the no, romance is shit. <laughs> this is a superhero show. So yeah. therefore, the thing that's driving the plot in the writer's perspective is the actual plot of the superhero fighting these bad guys. The yes. big bad of the season. That's what's driving the main show. That's not to say you can't like the other factors to it, but you got to remember, this is not a show oriented about ships. You got to remember that. There's a difference between that and like following a show because you like the ships. Of course you can do that. But remember what the show's origin is. It's about a superhero show. You're following this character and their journey, saving people, being a hero, tackling the challenges that come with being that. Yeah. Now, you can complain all you want about that if it's a romantic comedy and then there's a bunch of ships, fine. Then, because that's the driving factor of the show. But when it comes to... Not all, not all. I would say there's a bunch of people that at least I've talked to. There's some super court that I've talked to that at least are acknowledging, you know, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I still want to support the show. And of course, I love Lena and everything. And that's important. Mm -hmm. That's important. Everyone's able to feel that way. I draw a line for those who attack others for no reason just because they don't agree. That's childish. Yep. That's childish to do that who say, oh, screw the crossover if she's not in it. It's like, well, she's not the only main fucking character. 
You have 80 yeah. plus characters you can choose from. And she's not really a main character on her own show. Not to be a dick, but she's not. Not like, yet. I mean, yeah. and it sucks because Supergirl did downsize a lot. They had a huge cast that Jeremy Jordan's no longer a main mm -hmm. character either. mon has gone. mon has gone because he was a, supposed to be a series regular last. Well, he was a series regular technically. And mm. then, you know, things happen. And then because... Literally, that's how much power this like these this group has because they gave the actor so much shit. He didn't want to be in the show. In an interview, he said he didn't want to be in a negative backlash for portraying a character that the writers created. Yeah, not I mean, him. He's just doing what he's given. And in context, we gotta. I I like to think that we on our channel and obviously you like to look at it as psychological perspective. Why Monel? Like it's not um excusable for like his backstory but you can understand at least where he comes from and the fact that he tried to change was it perfect hell no no one is you know the but it's like they find excuses to hate on him and look what happened this actor decided to quit because he didn't want to be in it yeah the and his girlfriend who's the lead in real life yep. is trying to support him and be there for it and like you're putting that actress in a crosshair Defeating the whole purpose, and you're trying to shove the ship to happen, which again, ship what you want, but don't be so blind into it that you affect other people negatively. And that's what's happened. They're not realizing what they're doing is affecting the show negatively. The actors do see what they say. And if they're always seeing, oh, Chris Woods can go burn in fucking hell, like that's stupid. That's childish. Just because a ship of yours didn't happen. Ship what you want, but you gotta be respectful and come at it at a realist point. Remember, this is a TV show, and we're not the ones writing it. We have no control or say so of what goes on in the writing room. We have, uh, we're just fans, and they can only do so much to appease everyone in the fan base. And I don't think it's fair that I'm seeing a lot of, not everyone in the group, but a lot of people from that group just hating on it and making it toxic because it didn't used to be like that at least for me i didn't see it used to be like this it, it's grown over time and the whole thing i think it really started with mon -El because of how his character was written in season two and the writers explained in depth and they they covered it a lot about how he's grown over time and especially when he was in the future and then he's came back how it's changed him and everything over the last seven or some odd years. But they don't want to forgive. It's like, no. come on. It's been seven. For him, it's been seven years mm -hmm. that he learned his life says lessons. You're yes. telling me you don't think people are prone to change. Now, that that's the other thing. In real life, people can change. And yes, you don't have to forgive them for like, say you have a best friend that wronged you or hurt you really bad. You don't need to forgive them for what happened, but you can move forward, okay? You can let it go, accept that your friend changed and move forward. That's all we're asking. I'm not trying to denounce your opinion of what you think of a character, but you gotta accept, you know, this character is trying to change through the writing of what everyone's trying to do. And that was them trying to fix it because they got so much fucking hate season two for mon -El. On and top of, you know, everyone wants Lena and Kara together, which in the beginning, you know what? I kind of saw it. I kind of yeah. saw it. But the writers want a different direction. They want to put her with Jimmy. Granted, right now, or at least where we're at, they're kind of on a rocky start. So <laughs> it's up to, I don't know. We didn't watch episode seven yet. So okay. yeah, we, you'll see. You'll, you'll see. Okay. Uh, now, the thing is, the toxicity has now expanded beyond what the shows have given us because me was we perfect example. They cast Ruby Rose as Batwoman, instant backlash, instant attacking her. We've not seen want me. We've seen clips and pieces from the promos. We've not seen her character in the crossover. People are like, all right, no, no, it's gonna suck because Ruby Rose is terrible and we don't like her because she's not lesbian enough. It, it's just ridiculous. I have a thing about that actually too because that goes into her and the one that they casted for um the new chick in supergirl what mm -hmm. oh my god oh my god yeah. nia yeah. nia yeah. Null, who they casted her yeah i'm all for equal representation i see where they're coming from but with ruby rose it's like she like she is lesbian like what's the what is the ra i'm okay i'm straight but like i want to know i don't maybe that's something i don't understand like what do, you, what do you mean the scale of everything? Because I look at it as like a theatrical perspective because I'm studying like the background. I'm not calling myself a professional or anything. Like I don't claim to know everything. But from my point of view, 
you cast someone based on who auditions, right? Yep. Now mm -hmm. you cast people of the group you audition. You want to make sure of the people who audition, you represent as greatly as possible. Now, these are big TV shows. They want someone who with experience in acting. They want people who, who can portray the character justly and to can do a good job. I have no reason to doubt the casting so far in all the CW shows. So mm -hmm. far, everyone they brought in, I've either went, okay, I'll give them a pass, or they fucking killed it. I've never really had one where I'm just like, eh, you know? Yeah, there's some villains <laughs> written badly, but it's like, when it comes to casting, they're not looking for looks. They're looking for, can you portray the character we, we're writing? Can you portray mm -hmm. it with this tone? Can you deliver the lines a certain way when the, when the the if it's a hero right. as themselves and, with the, and then now in the suit when they're a different person? Because, I mean, Ruby has to portray Kate Kane outside of the costume and then in the suit. Can she do both? And, I mean, look, they're using the same casting director who cast Stephen Amell, Grant Gustin, who casted all the leads, basically. Yeah. So give the benefit of the doubt until you see what yeah. happens. Yeah, and like I'm all for equal representation, but you gotta understand in this business, in that business, it's so specific what they're looking for, and it has nothing to do against their equal representation. They're trying to show equal representation by bringing these amazing characters that come from the LGBT community, and I think that's great. Because if you look at it years ago, we never even had that. People shunned that. And that's now acceptable on TV. I think that's a fucking step forward. I'm so proud of where we are when it comes to that aspect. And there's still kinks to be worked out. You know? Like, it's hard because they're like, oh, she, uh, Nia Nall's character, she didn't look transphobic enough. I'm like, okay. What do you mean? Because, like, I'm trying to understand politely. Like, okay, so what are you looking for? Because then... Yeah. What you're looking for may not be the vision of what the directors are looking for casting wise. And again, of the people who audition, they're trying to see who looks good, who can act it. And then some that's just what happens and how you pick the actor. You gotta yeah. look at who does that. And I can understand where people want more visual representation because maybe they're looking for more, I don't know. I don't know what people are both looking for, but I don't think it's fair to take it out on the actors for getting cast because they did well in their auditions to land the roles that they got to take it out on them when we haven't even seen them do it. Like Nia, she's doing a great job. I feel like she's doing a great job with acting on Supergirl so far. And we haven't even seen Ruby Rose yet. Yeah. You know, because people make blanket statements. Okay. This person is not blank enough. This person isn't this enough. Okay, can you explain that? No, I'm just angry, so I'm going to tweet about it. But you don't give any reasoning to why you're doing this. I mean, look, if you don't I would like love Ruby, reasoning, yeah. If you don't like Ruby Rose as Batwoman, even though you've only seen bits and pieces from a promo, that's fine. But attacking the actress for getting a role, and they made a big deal about it, saying it's the first lesbian, you know, character that might be a lead in her own show if she gets the show, which is more likely going to happen, and that's fine. But yeah. it's like we're making a big deal out of it and that's okay. But like there's all these other characters that are on these shows that are already gay or lesbian or transgender, but it's like, okay, we're, tr we're, we're, re we're trying to represent everybody in our culture, but if they're not this enough, you complain and you bitch and you moan and we can't please you. The, the truth is we can't please certain people. And I think that's their whole idea is okay. We can't please everybody. Let's just keep moving forward. Let's just not... I think that's the only thing you can do. And it sucks yeah. because like, I want to understand where people are coming from. Like they're not this enough. Like, what do you mean? And I've seen other people with the Ruby Rose thing of like, Oh, she was a bitch in this. She was a really good actress. Like, okay, if that's your reasonings, sure. Maybe she didn't do a good job in the role, lack of direction. You know, maybe it was an earlier role. Who knows? I have to answer that's somebody here uh someone in the chat i hate myself says you're kind of biased do you have proof ruby was harassed have you seen twitter when she was casted i highly recommend you look into the backlash she was re receiving on social media and she deleted her twitter and go to her instagram only certain people well like there's only like seven or eight comments per picture because she has muted her comment section to only people she approves which is like mm -hmm. a few celebrity friends of hers especially arrowverse people that she's getting to know through the crossover look at yeah, it yeah it was a huge thing it was the day after that it was released that she was casted that uh, she deleted her twitter and that was about the time when like a bunch of uh other actors were deleting their twitter of backlash for their films and movies 
Yep. Also, there was like a huge wave of everyone deleting their Twitter, deleting their comment section. It's just like, it was really bad. And there's articles written about it too. So don't say we're biased because there's proof. I mean, I saw it happening. She was getting attacked. Every, like, like whenever she like sent out a tweet or something or posted a picture, she was getting attacked saying, you don't deserve this role. And people were saying she should die. Yeah, it was happening. So the thing is, no one is safe. That's the unfortunate part. No one is I, safe when it comes to casting or something because there's going to be a subset group of people that don't like a casting choice. In this instance, it's a very high profile thing. Batwoman, we know she's a lesbian in the comics. They're going that route for the show or in the crossover. And they cast Ruby Rose, which is a divisive actress because some people claim she can't act. People don't like her. So it was yeah. going to – they already pre prepared her, I bet, before they announced it that – this is going to happen, but I don't think they realized how big of a backlash it was going to be. But I think people are now starting to turn around because pictures and so. promos, she looks great. I think because I, I think she looks amazing. Yes. Uh, I got to get off here soon real quick, but I want to end it on this. I don't, we don't want to like anyone feel like, I think I can speak for Jordan too. We don't want anyone to think that, you know, we're hating on anyone. I just think we're both asking for, understanding because this is something that he and i we it's a it's a realm that we don't fully understand but we would like to mm -hmm. because that's what supergirl's doing right now they're trying to show different viewpoints so at least we try to try to reach an understanding with each other and i think that's what's wrong with our society no one's ever listening to each other to understand why people think the way they think and feel the way they feel so it's a two-way street if you feel a certain way please explain in depth so we can understand so we can level with you but at the same time let's be open to why things are happening that aren't going anyone's way and we could try to understand why that's happening because i doubt it's the writers or the creators being like oh fuck you we don't want to give representation and stuff to give you the cat like the bat or that bat woman that you want that's definitely not what they're trying to do. This is a valued character they've been working on for months. They want to do it justice. That's how they felt they were going to do it justice. And you got to try and understand from that view, but also we, I feel like, need to understand from their view why they are upset. So I'm asking for more understanding. Explain. What's the real reason, like, why you don't think Ruby Rose should have been casted as Batwoman? But at the same time, when that's all said and done, once we understand both sides, except, you know what? No matter what we feel, this is already happening. So let's give it a shot before we can validate our opinions of why we think it's going to be good or bad. Let's at least give the show a chance. So that's why we everyone should watch it. So we can see and make our own opinions after we've seen it instead of making these opinions like, oh, it's going to suck before we even get to see the crossover. Yep. I mean, that's that's really what it is. We have to give it a shot whether we think it's going to be okay or not i mean you know mm -hmm. that's why reactions to trailers and stuff are kind of hard because like you're basing it off the footage they're showing you and I mean, to be fair we don't even have a full trailer yet either we just I'm, have a 50 second teaser I don't so know it's why like why they haven't put out a full one yet i'm so annoyed i know it's like there's not much to go off of yeah. if you're just giving teasers so it like i can understand at that frustration why some people's like see it looks bad it's like because it's just a teaser, but I get it. But it's all the same time, like, it looks good because it's a teaser. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. what, what's the comment yeah. saying now? Um, People are just talking about, people are responding, saying uh, that Titans was also getting it, too. And, um, yeah. and then people are saying Batwoman looks amazing. So, you know, it's a thing to where, and someone at one point said that we were, were this was a good discussion. And I think it is because, you know, there's there, it's it's like either you're right or you're wrong and there's no like you can't discuss certain things or you're or you're this or you're that and it's like look me is me to the core i'm just watching a tv show that's what it is now if you want to dive into the actor's persona or what they represent fine if the show's one the show added curtis on arrow season four gay character okay fine i don't care they added me a transgender woman on supergirl Fine, it doesn't bother me. But when if you're looking too much into it and you're getting so frustrated and angry and you're like ranting and you're screaming on Twitter, I don't know if you're helping the conversation. All you're doing is just spewing out stuff, and I I I'm tired of hearing it. You know, I'm and tired. At that point, that's of when it. we need that understanding. Like, if you're so frustrated, help us understand why you are frustrated. Because it's hard, honestly, for me. It's hard for me to know. I'm not 
lesbian. I'm not bisexual, but I would like to understand so then I can understand why people think the way they think. We're not trying to discredit anyone. We're not trying to uh, invalidate anyone. And I think I agree with you, said because a lot of people think, oh, there's a right and wrong answer. There isn't. There is, I think this versus I think this. Neither of these things is right nor wrong. They're just different from each other. Depending yep. on your perspective, you may interpret it as, oh, if I think this, that means you're wrong. We got to take out that. It's just different perspectives. And that's when we need to talk to each other and yep. get a better understanding. So I'd love <clears throat> to talk to people more and understand why, like, you know, their thoughts on it. Because I like to go more on the technical side of like, oh, why do you think they cast it this or all this stuff because I'm studying uh, film and everything. But that's just me as a person. Cause like you, you're just like, Oh, I'm just here for the show, yeah. which is awesome. <laughs> I'm just, Hey, just give me, just give me a green arrow. Acting like Batman. <laughs> that's all I care about. But, <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get Alex back on, but thank you so much Bye. for me, Jordan. Of course. Yeah, I heard you talking about him. Like I need to say something. Well, it had to be brought up because it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I understand. Okay, I'm leaving now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get off screen, boy. Guess who's back? Back again. <sighs> um, is back. there anything else that we need to discuss? Because we could just jump into <laughs> some questions. If Ooh! You can read people's questions, because people have been people uh, have questions throughout throughout. There was a lot of. Uh, what do you think of Else Worlds? Are, are you excited? Okay. No, we're not excited for Else Worlds. It looks shit, garbage. Get it out of here. It doesn't have so and so in it. Um, uh, uh, I think I want to talk about a couple of YouTube things real quick. <laughs> oh, YouTube. Okay, let's talk about some YouTube stuff. All right. Um, well, I want to talk about how excited I am to see your movie finally. Uh, <laughs> So I'm hoping that everybody in this chat has at least knows about it or checked it out um, so. because it is definitely a passion project that I cannot wait to see. Yeah. Dude, I was sitting there we were, and I had my director over and I had my co-star uh, Logan who plays Barrett, my apprentice, and we're sitting there and we launched the premiere link and we're waiting for people to show up. And then <laughs> like we got down to 10 minutes left and it's like people start showing up and they're like, Oh my God, it's almost here. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, Oh crap. Okay. And uh -huh. so I think for me, the first film darts on, I think is it's an accomplishment, but I see it as a learning process because we went into it doing as much as we could and trying new things, doing things different to make it as cinematic as we possibly could and we learned okay boom mic is not necessarily the greatest way to pick up audio because if it's really loud around us it picks up everything mm. the, li the live mics you can hook into your phone like you plug into your phone you can hook under a shirt or hide under the robe or one of the tunics mm. that's perfect audio but we didn't use it every single time so that's a problem Mm, gotcha. I think where we really strived, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I think the story is great, but that's because I spent months on it, writing it, fine tuning it, working with my director, working with also Logan who plays Barrett to kind of look at the lines. And uh, obviously on set, we shot it using some of the lines. Some people took the lines and kind of interpret it a little bit differently. As long as the message gets across, the, the line is said in, in, in a way that is the same as written. I'm fine with that, mm -hmm. but I think we accomplished the story and I think the visual effects that my director worked on while editing everything, the lightsabers and other little things oh, yeah. um, are so good compared to what they could have been if we didn't spend the time working. And we spent a lot of times reshooting stuff and g getting different angles of stuff. And, you know, we're going to work our asses off to make the sequel even better. Um, so I hope you guys like it. That's the main thing is that you actually enjoy it because we we worked hard <laughs> well the fact that you're like ready to roll with the sequel and then you're taking all this uh constructive criticism and uh rolling with it in terms of like all right sweet like i can there's definitely things i can improve but for the most part i crafted something i'm proud of i think uh i think it's pretty exciting <laughs> i mean i think that what i'm writing now for the sequel i think it's definitely going to be it's i think it's going to overall be a longer film than this mm. one and yeah. we're we're thinking 45 minutes an hour depending on the script but 
our main thing is we we're, we're not on a crunch time. We can mm-hmm. actually take our time to film things, get locations. We're we're already discussing different locations that we could switch it up. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. Um, but it's like I had this idea in December of last year. We actually did it, and it's out. Mm-hmm. But it's like now, how do I build on that? How do I take it to the next step? Wow. What's the what's the next thing? Mm-hmm. Um. Looking back on it, I probably would have made some changes, but for what it is, I think we put out something that, to me, is pretty solid. It's not perfect. We know it's not perfect. We got mm. some people giving criticisms. You could have done this. could have done that. Mm. And mm. We're going to try our best. But what I'm really excited about, because I don't know, because the beauty is I know exactly what this is. I don't know a freaking thing about your project, which is like... <sighs> uh, yes. And the so, fact is, you're making a show. Like you're making a mini series. A fi- is it five episodes for uh, season yeah. one, or essentially? Yeah. The beauty is, I have no idea what Crimson Crosshairs is about. The thing is, I don't know anything. I don't know about pre-production or what the hell's going on behind the scenes. So it's got me more excited because see, Darzan, I know exactly how it plays out, and I know how people are going to see it. But for your thing, I got no idea. So, the incredible thing about Crimson Crosshairs is just how excited people were to be a part of the project. And the fact that I'm not trying to rush myself um, because I don't want to just throw something out there. um, Just, hey, look, look what I did. Like, I want to make, or look what I can throw in there. Look what I can do. It's like, no, I want to be able to say that I'm proud of what I did, not just throw it out there, you know? Like, oh boy. Um, just the fact that I have a character that I'm very passionate about and other characters that may possibly be in it that I'm also passionate about. And just the, what I've seen in people's eyes when I ask them and that uh, that's to do with costume designers um, and other actors. <clears throat> and the, I've, I've written the first episode, uh, me and Brittany. She helped, uh, I kind of threw the ideas out there and then she helped to kind of form them and then we were able to, you know, form the idea to work better with the time slot that we're going to be trying to get because I'm not trying to exert myself either. I'm not trying to, exa- I'm not trying to throw a bunch of characters in the needless characters. I'm not trying to th- like make this shit uh, too long. I don't want to do that. So um, the pre-production uh it's been a little halted with our busy schedules, but um, it's still something that I'm very excited to get going back on. So, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, now when, you, when do you start shooting, do you know? Um, we're aiming for next year. Next year. Next August. Next, next August, around that time. Um, we are getting some costumes together currently. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, costume props, just the basics for now. Um, yeah, first we're, we need to work on the second episode soon enough, but I can't wait to see, like, have you guys see what surprises we have in store. Um, and we had to alter a little bit, honestly. Like, there, there's actually one character that is not in the show anymore. Oh, actually, really? Actually, actually written out because we had uh, basically four major players in the show, but actually. Um, we decided to take it out. Yeah, we decided to take out a character that we felt because we wanted a character in there at the same time that we felt like the plot can still go without that character in there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to confirm also that I will not be in the show at all. I wanted to take the directing role on it and focus on directing it so mm-hmm. Alex would be the lead. He's making the story like it's his vision since he's really passionate about Roy Harper. And I wanted to take that step back so we can make that vision come to light. That's why we're taking our time on it so I can focus on the special effects, all the equipment and the weapons that we would be using and making sure that visually it works, making sure that, you know, If I was in it, then I would go back and forth from like behind camera and off camera. And I feel like to best make this really work, I need to be fully behind camera to make sure that the vision of what is going to happen looks amazing. And I'm excited for that aspect of it because it's going to be different from what I'm doing. So it's my first time being behind. And 
especially with what Alex has in store, as his ideas swirl around and as we get it out on paper, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, because, I mean, um, the director role is like very tedious because like my director spent a lot of time getting shots and looking a certain way. And I even had to direct some bits of it, like little parts or whatever, because my director also had a role, has a role in the film. And you see him in the trailer for like the blue robe guy. Okay. That's, that's him. And so he, obviously if the camera's sitting still, he can just do what he has to do in the scene. But then if he's like having, if the camera's having to move or do something, he has to have someone else. So I had to do some stuff. Mm. And it's very hard to get, shots looking a certain way i mean it's it's time consuming to get things looking a certain way wow yeah but i mean i'm excited as hell for this i mean you guys have plenty of time like so we're, we're planning on shooting the sequel in may roughly wow. start but when we shot the first film we had we started in like in the middle of june and we ended the day before in august he had to go back to school which is hours away mm. so we tried our hardest and scheduling is a bitch. Um, but what we noticed is that as people were working on the film with us, the more excited they got. And now with the film's out, all these people that could have helped us or didn't have time see the final product and go, oh, because in the past he's done stuff with people and it's been okay. He just gets a shot. As long as he gets an angle of it, it doesn't matter. He just moves on. Mm -hmm. But this, we spent a lot of time doing prep and setting up and getting right. things looking a certain way mm -hmm. they're like oh so you're actually wait you're doing this okay now i want to be a part of it and like okay now you want to help after we've proven ourselves that we're actually doing something different the best so, part it's the best part because nobody ever actually wants to do the work but then when they see it, like oh i could have had a part in this yes if you put in work yeah boy um so yeah that's that's oh thank you uh, I, oh, geez. Okay. Cannot wait to, to watch what we got there and see what people missed out on. And, you know, you never know yeah. what you can see in those movies, right? You know, like, cause just so surprising, really. What could be mm -hmm. in a movie? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, never, you never know what, what cameos you can see, especially in my series. We'll, uh, we'll definitely see if we get, if there's some cameos in there. I don't know though. Crazy. Yeah, but um, yeah, so yeah, definitely excited uh, to watch and then see what we have in store more from that part of your Star Wars universe, and then um, can't wait to get back into writing um, the script. Uh, but yeah, I also um, for YouTube, I am going to be doing uh, D and D for Mister Torchwood Boy. Oh. So um, he asked me to be a part of it, and uh, I, I do love D and I'm currently part of um, two, like just in person D and D. So this will be my first time doing it uh, online. So with the people that are doing it, I'm I'm decently excited, and it should be it should be pretty fun, I think. Um, and just with do your thing. Sorry, there's people showing up. Um, that are that are clearly trolls. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I love it. I love a good troll. <laughs> boy, Roy is your boy. <laughs> it's this boy right here. It's Pete. I call him the Prancing Pete. Prancing Pete. Yes, because whenever he he can jump on the bed now. Whenever he jumps on, he's. <laughs> Francis <is> over <laughs> that boy, Jesus. that boy, that boy. Um, I don't know where these fucking trolls are coming from. That's you know you hit it big when you have random people just making accounts just to comment. I guess. God damn, dude. Okay, wait. There's one thing I put I put in the tweet: Lion King trailer. Oh, so good. Yeah. I uh, will admit I have not seen it yet. You haven't seen it? No. Dude, <laughs> come on. Oh, Alex no. has not seen the trailer for Lion King yet. Oh, uh, I meant to tell you because someone commented it. It was a troll, but they said that your that your feet was in his mouth yesterday or something. 
Did you put your feet in someone's mouth yesterday? It was a troll comment. Someone commented. So it was true, right? You put your feet in someone's mouth? Okay. Nice to know. My girlfriend's a freak. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, she's a freak. Awesome. She's over there <laughs> working on, she's cross, cross stitching. Is that what it is? Ah. Cross stitching a blanket. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what the fuck? You just told me I put my feet in someone's mouth? Yeah, someone commented it. So clearly yeah. you did it. Of right? course. I knew it all works. Yes. <laughs> I've, been on. I've been surprised. Uh, the only thing that we I've been seeing in our comments is just like, uh, where is this reaction? I was like, hold on. Oh, two seconds. Those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, it's been nice because I, I honestly haven't seen it much negative. Uh, uh, negative feedback to our reactions because I, I think Brittany was talking about it, but just trying to be understanding and be fair with our opinions, you know? Yeah. Classic, I mean, classic you, stuff. you gotta be honest with yourself. You can't just bullshit, you know? Yeah. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, have you guys put up your Christmas stuff yet? Come on. You put Christmas stuff. Christmas stuff. No, Christmas I have my Christmas stuff. tree up right now. I'm looking at it right now. We I got, I got, uh, I got a Superman ornament. Got my Darth Vader. Got my Spider Man. Got my Hulk. Got my Batman. Ben oh, Affleck. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's funny it's because it's one of those trees that has lights on it. We didn't have to put lights on it. Ah, <laughs> yeah. In this house, I don't know if we're gonna be putting a. Uh, Christmas lights, but I know that when my when the tree goes up at my parents' house, my mother will request my presence so that I may hang up my ornaments there. <laughs> um, guys, we're gonna be on here for a little bit longer. If you want to ask us any questions, please post them now because we want to hear you. We want to hear you. We want to know what you're thinking. We want to know Always. what you want to talk about. I mean, we pretty much covered the gambit. I mean. I don't know. I mean, the we know the X Men and Fantastic Four and Deadpool's coming to the MCU at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Fox is crashing and burning, trying to get everything done before they get bought out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's perfect. A Batgirl ornament. A Batgirl ornament. Oh man! Only the I, need to, I need to find that now. Batgirl ornament, honey. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> oh, Dark Phoenix. That is um that that's a that's a pretty interesting thing. Dark Phoenix. I don't know. It it, it might be okay. Yeah, just with like walk around. Did you mind? Oh, you want your purse. I'm like, what are you doing, honey? <laughs> uh Battle Girl Ornament, you know it's coming. It's the sequel Darzon 2. Yes, that's the sequel to the second movie. Of course. Um, will you shave your beard or hair? I don't know where that's coming from. Are you asking me that or Alex that? I already did. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, me and Brittany will be reacting to Titans when uh, the full thing has uh, finally come out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to see you guys react to particular episodes that have things that will make you go, what? Ah! I know. Um, I think it was – I forget what episode number, but there's a certain – uh, thing that's in the background that will make you go, what? Are you serious? Th they actually have that? I'm like, yeah, they do. Already a sorry. Uh, yeah. God, I can't wait. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. New Mutants. New Mutants. Yeah, they keep pushing New Mutants off. I don't. I don't know if it's gonna happen anymore. Well, I think that the movies are gonna come out. It's just, are they gonna be financially successful? Because the thing is, New Mutants, that's like a one and done for those actors. Like, they can't come back because the, the characters will be swallowed up by the MCU. Yeah. And the actors who've been in Dark, who've been throughout the, the new trilogy or the new films with the newer cast, they're done after Dark Phoenix. Like, they're not coming back. Because, I mean, Kevin Feige's like, I ain't going to recast. I'm going to recast. I'm not going to bring you back. No. Yeah. Or, new new X Men. <laughs> New X Men. Um, um, do you think Elseworlds crossover will top Crisis on Earth X? Do you think that? I mm, Crisis on Earth X was so good though; it's gonna be hard. But 
they're already proving, hey, we got Superman. That's a big plus. Uh, yeah. We got the original Flash from the 90s show back. We got Batwoman. Ugh, it might be better. And it's going to be sucky because it's like, hey, this crossover is better than Crisis. It's like, oh, but Legends wasn't there. I'm like, well, that actually helped because they got all these other characters to come in because Legends wasn't taking up screen time. Not to be a dick. By the <laughs> way, Legends is dropping below a million viewers per episode now. They've dipped okay. below a million. People are thinking this is the last season of the show. I haven't seen one bit of it yet. Yeah, same. Yeah. It's just because they took the whole concept that we were waiting for and then just turned it back into exactly what the show was before. And you would think I'd and be excited because they have Constantine, but I'm not excited to watch it. They just made him a part of the show. Like that's that's yeah. it. Like it wasn't like, oh, this huge this this huge player in the DC DC universe has finally come to legend. It's gonna shake things up. No, it's just the same show with Constantine, which is a good addition, but we also lost Wally to his own personal reasons, which is fine. But it's just saddening that we lost Wally, gained Constantine, but the show just Stayed its course, where it's and, just, and they get rid of Vixen, but they bring her right back, playing as a different character. That really sold it for and, me. And so in still, like, mm-hmm. that that really, that really was. Are you really okay? Listen, you can like an actress, but the fact that you wrote this character in this way, that's your own fault. You could have very well recasted Vixen and said, "This is Vixen. That's going to be a part of our team now." I don't give a fuck because honestly. If the other actress has a lot of things to do, that's fine. Um, and it, I did like her for what we saw, but if you just wanted to recast and make this the Vixen, that's fine. But the fact that it's like, we, oh, we like the actress, so we're going to keep her. It's like, you realize you are literally just continually breaking the idea of the show by having her still on the Wave Rider. Yeah, because the whole point is for people to exit and come, like new characters to come in when people exit the show. And it's like, no, we're going to keep her around. It's like, but but we don't want her. We want a new character. Like, well, she is, but it's the same actress. Well, I mean, there was one, we were doing a review for Arrow because right after the episode is done, I mute the TV and we do our review. Mm. Legends airs after Arrow. So Legends is playing and I'm talking to her and all of a sudden I see there's a werewolf. I'm like, what the fuck? I turn the TV off. There's another episode where they're at some kind of camp. It's like in the 80s or something. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. About yeah. them going to some camp, and there's, and that's the thing where that swamp thing or swamp that's, thing, it's, yeah, it's that thing. I'm like, why is this? Why? So first, Billy explained to me um, mm-hmm. that it is the swamp thing is what the uh, Netflix quote unquote movie that they're watching is called. I get that it's not the actual monster's name, but the fact that really. Really? You, 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 you even put that lingo in this show? Please. And and then when, the fact that you go to a you know they, When you know they can't do it because DC Universe is doing a Swamp Thing show, a proper Swamp Thing show. And, and they're then, like, well, we can't do Swamp Thing. Let's do Swamp Thing. Like, hey, aren't we so cheeky and clever? Uh, not really. And the fact no. that it's like, Constantine, you should dress up like us in our really inconsistent conspicuous summer camp council uniforms. He's like, I don't do uniforms. And then he does. It's like, this show was supposed to be changed because of you, Constantine, and now you're just conforming. Also, here's another uh, nail on the Legends coffin, is that uh, they're not returning until April after the mid-season finale. And it's like, Arrow's coming back in January. I think Supergirl and Flash are doing the same. In the middle of January. So we have a little bit of a, about a month break after the crossover. That's fine. I, I need a break. I'm tired. When I come yeah. home on Sunday, when Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, especially Monday, Tuesday after work, I'm tired and I have to do an, an episode reaction and then edit for hours because I want it up day of. Yeah. I need a break. But Legends is being pushed away until April. That is. Mm, yes. Not it good. Doesn't spell good things. Man. Oh, Constantine. It's like finally, re- finally re-enters the Arrowverse. Yeah, or finally re-enters. <laughs> he should have signed that deal that John Barrowman did, who plays Malcolm Merlin at the time, who could just appear on different shows at any given time. He does that multi contra- multi-show contract. That's what they should have done, but yet he sent it for Legends and <laughs> he signs up for possibly the last season. But I mean, they could still use him after the fact, and that's fine. Please. But it's like. If you can give me Constantine, which 
his show, his first season of his actual live action was underrated. People need to check that out. Mm. They finally bring him into the Arrowverse. They connect it. And if you put him on a show that I can't even bring myself to watch, that's saying something. Because it's the concept doesn't change. You're only adding yeah, mythical exactly. creatures. And there's a, a unicorn that kills people. I'm not interested. Especially when they're just dressing up like the, the 70s. And it's like, well... <sighs> What does what really changed? Like nothing. That, that, ex exactly. They they literally are they're just playing dress up. It's the same concept they've oh. done since season one. Let's go to a different timeline we haven't been to yet. Play dress up, fight, rinse, repeat. Yep. Now we yeah, have to Yes, yeah, because I want to see my superheroes in 70s outfits or in the 20s outfits fighting a bunch of random people instead of their actual superhero suits. That's what I want. Yes, yes. that's what I've been dreaming of. I've been dreaming of watching uh, of them dress up like this, and then um, and then Nate, who is still fucking all his whole character is I like sex. Um, I like drinking beer, and I don't give a shit. It's not yeah. changed one iota. It's the same. Not at all. It, not in any way. And no, then think about it. There's no character development for any fucking character on that show. They are the yeah. same as they were when they first walked on that ship. I love what people had to say about Sarah in the first episode of uh, the, the, the season where it's like, oh, her father died. Ah, who gives a shit? I don't, okay, <laughs> I didn't even know that, but that makes me even hate it more. Exactly, exactly. Like, wow, like, okay, yeah, you know, you actually came back for Arrow for like two seconds. Oh, like, that was such nice. a slap in the face. They were like saying, Sarah Lance coming back for the finale. Oh, shit, she's going to help the team fight freaking... The, the, the dragon, she's going to help fight Ricardo Diaz. No, shows her for two seconds, meets Laurel from another Earth for one second, and we don't even see Quentin's death on screen. And there's like, yeah. oh, dad. And now you're telling me that she barely has a reaction in the opening of the scene. What the fuck? The, you know, ah. those situations. You know, sometimes what I've heard actually is that um, – Sometimes when tragic stuff happens, it affects you. But, you know, who cares? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. See, the best episode of Legends, uh, I, I think the finale was decent last season, but was literally the Constantine episode where they go and they're Nor Nora Dark. That was like they're yeah. actually dressed in their costumes for a little bit, and they how, they fight this supernatural force. Like, that was amazing. And it's in, so they bring Constantine for that episode, and they actually connect to Nora Dark, who was a part of the worst season of the Arrowverse ever done, Arrow Season 4. They actually make that pretty solid, and they have a version of Captain Cold, which is not Captain Cold, but whatever. Uh, yeah. And they heavily focus on the Constantine theme music, and he's there, and he's doing everything. But now that he's on the show, meh! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he does it, and it's like, I see him dressing up with them, like dressing up in the worst. Yeah, they, they dress up as camp counselors in that 80s episode. When they go to the camp, they're dressed up as camp counselors. Yes. So I see, yes. I, yeah, I want to see Constantine dressed up like a camp counselor. I don't want to see him in the trench coat. No, I don't want to see him in the red iconic tie with the white shirt. No, camp no. counselor, that's what I'm here for. I want to see him being a camp counselor and giving advice in that really cool accent. Can't deny yes. the accent. But, exactly. God, I, Matt Ryan, I don't know what you were thinking, dude. Um, you should just sign up for Arrow. That would have been cool. I, I would have been fine. I know, no mysticism. But fuck it. He's Constantine. Let it pass. <laughs> Let your ship be tarp team arrow. <laughs> like, um, well, we got uh we got black canary, and we also got a uh, green arrow. Um, we got wild dog, we also got Constantine. Con yeah, we got a magic dude. Fuck yeah, we got a magic dude. You remember when we had that magic dude for like four episodes of the of season five and then he had to go away? Yeah, we had magic. Let's also not <laughs> talk about the fact that they made Constantine say, Well, Damien Dark, you better watch out for that guy. Why he's a shitty villain? Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> they made Constantine scared of Damien Dark. Are you are you freaking kidding me? He's Constantine. He he was in hell at one point. They all of us can we Constantine help? No, he's in hell. Oh, 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 I hope he's okay. No, he's literally in hell. Yeah, yeah. Where, where's, yeah. Where, where's Damien Dark? Oh, he's he's he's, he's fighting the legends on Don't the Wave Rider. I'm going to fist fight him at the end, and uh, this is how it's going to look. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, 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 just like that. Uh, just like, punch, wow. Punch. Meanwhile, punch. Oliver's like, constantly was scared of this guy? The yeah. Um, but my favorite thing is your bad. Bad boy. 
<laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to toot my oh, own horn, but uh, there's a certain part in my movie where I throw a punch. I won't say to who or what reason, but I think that punch throw looks more believable than the season four finale fight. Just saying. Just uh, throwing it out there, you know. <laughs> um, dear God. I know. Jesus Christ. For... It it always dives into us shitting on the bad parts of the universe. <laughs> it always it always <laughs> delves into. Let's shit talk on the stuff we hate about the Arrowverse. <laughs> I just going to say something. Like, literally just goes, Woo! Yeah, we start on the high note. Batwoman looks great. Elseworlds looks oh, great. So oh, remember Damien Dark? Oh, remember Constantine? Oh, yeah. Legend. Back down. Oh, Legends. Yeah. yeah, you know. Um, I think um, we were talking about, like, just no character development. And there is stuff actually. like that. Um, no. what? Fucking hell. Well, that, that's, just, that, that's what they should tell the actors if they're going to sign up. Hey, do you want to play an actor who doesn't develop at all for four seasons? Sure. Okay. Sign up. Here's the contract. <laughs> I just Good. I just love I love it because I love how people just, oh, Legends is the real like comic book show. Like it's the, it, it's like, dude, like it's just because it's like a Saturday night. It's a Saturday morning cartoon show. Oh my god, it is. Yeah, that's all no, it is. There's no real stakes. They claim exactly. there are, but there's not. <laughs> no. Oh. No. Season one, we can't remove this person from the timeline because it will fuck real shit up later on. Ah, stay on the Wade Rider for life. Hey, Vixen Amaya, come on. And they keep saying, well, it might start affecting the timeline. She's been out of the timeline for a bit. Oh. If you just bring her back a second before you pulled her and put her in a different spot, you're good. There's no yeah, time loop. Whatever. It's fine. Exactly. No consequences. Totally ignore like the consequences that you've set up before. Um, yeah, no stakes. We're just gonna beat him with a big fluffy teddy bear. Which, and yes, it was cool. But um, we're gonna beat him with a big fluffy teddy bear. Nobody's gonna uh, fucking ever get any uh, development. And we're just gonna have these like quirky quip guys. And then it's gonna be a guy that's done with everybody's shit. You know, classic. There, there. It's so funny because that whole Bebo versus Malice sequence, it divided people. Either they're saying this is the reason why Legends is the best show. There's other people who go, this is the reason why Legends is a joke, because that because the final fight scene leading up to it was great. They had all these returning characters from the yeah. season. They yeah. were all using their different abilities. It was awesome. And all of a sudden, let's form Bebo right. and fight a demon. Okay. <laughs> At the time, I was laughing at it, and I said yes. how, how ridiculous it was. Now, yeah. looking back on it, it proved it just proves my point. Legends cannot be taken seriously. That's why. Mm -hmm. That's probably why they didn't include yeah. him in the crossover because we can't take these people seriously. They're just gonna make jokes the whole time. They're gonna show up in, in Gotham wearing sixties outfits because they're fucking stupid. They're gonna show up in Gotham and say, "Who needs an army when you have legends?" Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, God. sorry. Who needs an army when you have legends? Shut up, Cinnamon Steel. <laughs> Go back to your cage, boy. Shut up. <laughs> you like your cage. Get out of here, boy. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 so true. Um Jesus Criminy. That's I uh yeah, exactly. So it's interesting that you've changed your tune. But uh I don't know, maybe if I watch it again I'd the same I, I don't know. It's just kinda like to me at, at the time it was like it's 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 they can do this. The fact that a show like this can can grow as like in terms of like <sighs> I don't want to it just it's not even it growing a, it's the clay yeah, yeah exactly exactly not even just I don't know I don't even know what I'm trying to say but what, what I'm trying to say is if you told me that you could have a show that could have a giant teddy bear fighting a demon at one point and make it somewhat believable that is difficult to pull off so the fact that we even got to the point where we're actually it kind of made sense of the show is a credit to it, but the fact that it is what it is, yeah, <sighs> it's a weird situation. It's it's actually device if you're absolutely right. So it's just weird. Here's weird. the thing, Tyler uh, Jackson's life. That's why people love legends. They don't take themselves seriously. That's the problem. They don't take themselves seriously because superhero shows you have to you have to make the characters like actually take themselves seriously and whatever. And it's like they see it all as a joke. And I just can't, I can't keep, I, I thought the concept was cool in season one. It was different, but then I realized it's the same form. I mean, look at Arrow. 
it's on its seventh season and it's probably the best season since season five and season five was phenomenal. And it's like the new showrunner brought something new to it. And we have the all over prison stuff and it was great. And the flash forwards add something oh, to it. Legends. All they do is add new characters and they don't change a bit when they're on the wave rider tool. When they leave, they're always the same character for the most part. And then you look at the fact they're adding in magical creatures. I, I, I think it's too much. I mean, Flash just time traveling. That's fine. Supergirl's on another Earth, so they can get away with stuff. But Legends, you're doing too much. Make me go, how is Arrow and Flash in the same universe as magical creatures like a, the Wolfman and a, and, and a unicorn? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Like, if we look at all of the, the, the seasons right now, Flash forwards, having Oliver not in the costume, Flash having his daughter. What a situation that only can be done by the flash where you have your daughter grown up coming to you when you're still just like kind of adult, like a mid adult, you know, like yeah. young adult, like that's only something the flash can do. And that's only something that the flash can pull off the way it does. It's so good. Um, and then Supergirl exploring, uh, you can love it or you can hate it. Um, we, I think me and Brittany have talked about how, you know, you can, it, you, some people do like to have some kind of, version of the real world represented in their superhero shows. Some people yeah. like to escape the real world by going to superhero shows. So it's all dependent on what you really enjoy. But holy uh, crap, I saw that jump boy. <laughs> yeah, he is he's insane. Dang. Um but you know so it's all dependent on your opinion and honestly I think it's being done well but it's a little sometimes a little too heavy handed for me. But it's unique, right? It's something that Supergirl can't just go and fight. Yeah. Which brings another dimension to the show about who she is as a symbol. Meanwhile, <laughs> Legends is just exactly what you said. So each show has given a different perspective on on who, who the heroes are, except for Legends. And the, I, I, I haven't got I haven't even gotten started on Black Lightning, and I'm sure they have they have they have another thing where they're having a villain return, which is what Arrow did, which is another unique. It's just yeah. all the uniqueness that it show has brought. Where Arrow, well, I mean. No, I got to think about it too because Arrow, they announced Beth Schwartz was taking over as showrunner before season six ended. And I bet that she was like telling Mark Guggenheim, Winnie Miracle, okay, there's certain things I want you guys to end on because this is what I want to do for season seven. Because I bet she pitched it and they said, okay, you're the new showrunner for season seven. So she needed certain things. She wanted to make sure Richard Dragon, Ricardo Diaz is not dead. dead. Wanted yeah. to make sure that Oliver is in prison. May and it, I mean, it's unfortunate mm -hmm. that Quentin had to die, but I mean, yeah. It allows the ability to do more. That means that gives Dinah the ability to be the police captain, which is right. switching it up for her character. Yeah, and that, that's a good change. I like that change, honestly. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, all that... And then Black Lightning, like I was saying. Um, just the, the freshness that it gave us to where um, it was a superhero... We don't ever get a... I used to be a superhero. Now I'm trying to do it again. We get a, this is how I became a superhero. And now it's like, it's, we don't get that unique perspective of a family man that was a hero returning and then having his family be, you know, try to find out their powers along with him. We don't get that. And then especially with a villain that lives through the finale, like yeah. this is a fresh take on, on superhero shows. And then, People will say, well, Legends is a fresh take because it doesn't take itself seriously. But just like you mentioned, it's just like, but if they don't care, why should we? Yeah, if like, they don't take themselves seriously, why should we take the show seriously? Like, and then people argue, well, you're supposed to turn your brains off. You're supposed to enjoy just the craziness. But I don't want to turn my brain off. I want to analyze the show and understand why certain characters are making decisions. And in a sense, like, of, if they don't take so seriously, why do I care about the decisions? That, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, do I love to watch Green Arrow do some fucking do you mind awesome man. like when when season six opening when he flies out of the water arrows coming out of the water then he flies up yeah that, the thing is but but does that matter if i don't know why he's doing that or what he's doing it's just mindless at that point it's just yeah it's just mindless action at that point and yeah it could be cool sometimes but that's not why i watch these shows i watch these shows to see for the, the, for the stories yeah exactly yeah exactly so uh, that's just our take on it. But you know, Peter. yes, this this boy, this boy right here, he's a boy. <sighs> My goodness. Well, 
I think we're getting down to that time where we're going to wind down the podcast, guys. We've been here for almost two hours getting up there. Um, we we missed a lot. We had a lot to cover. Um, but yeah, we I think we I think we covered most of everything. Yeah, we got uh, Disney, Mar- Marvel, Star Wars, Elseworlds, all the shows themselves, mm-hmm. and then Netflix. I think a lot of stuff covered, honestly. Oh. A lot of stuff to look forward to. Have you started chilling Adventures of Sabrina or no? No. I, I need to finish no. season one, but I'm really digging it. We we me and Brittany have not been able to get on a consistent schedule because it's just like it's yeah. just hectic. Well, I mean, with the Arrowverse shows coming back, it really altered my schedule for YouTube in terms of doing different types of videos. Because like I'm I'm used to like I was used to every day I could come home and just do whatever. But now I got three hours after five o'clock when I get off work before a show starts. So I have a limited amount of time and it's a pain, but it's just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. The the shows are kicking ass. I mean, I think they're doing great. I mean, Supergirl could be better. I will agree. Um, Oh, if I got to mention when you brought up Nora, the actress who plays Nora is actually older than the actress who plays Iris and Barry. She's older than them. Like, Damn. Yeah, right. And they make it work. Somehow, some way. Yeah. Um, uh, so real quick, I think. Uh, real, okay, I want to answer. Okay, somebody, I watch Arrow for the superheroes, not for prison. Um, and the greatest thing about Arrow is that you have other superheroes um, other than Green Arrow that we care about and actually have been developed over multiple seasons. So, and the fact that he is in prison shows, um, it shows growth and it can show that there are consequences to being a superhero sometimes, which, you know, only and, some of the greatest comics have shown that time and time again, there's consequences to being a superhero. And me and the majority of the episodes featured the new green arrow, but we also saw future Dinah wearing an outfit. Um, we see f- future Zoe wearing an outfit. We saw wild dog in his traditional season five outfit for a, a bit. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I like the change because it's like, okay, Oliver's in prison. They're all under immunity. They can't do anything. So they're limited to what they could do. So it was a storyline device, but I think things are going to change moving forward. I personally believe, but uh, I like it because unlike what they did with Barry in prison for three episodes, Oliver was in for seven and it was brutal. And you saw yeah. him being the hood. I'm not saying green arrow. I'm saying the hood because he was being brutal. Mm-hmm. And so he was being the green arrow or the hood, whatever without the suit and still worked because that fucking beard, man, <laughs> just so cool. So good. Yeah. Um, and then real quick, real quick. Um, is there something in Elseworlds that you haven't seen that you want to see? So in, in all the promos that you haven't seen uh, in the promos? Well, um, I would say Nora Freeze because I want to know her, her involvement. Mm-hmm. I know there's a picture that came out showcasing her, but I, I want to know what her role is because I think Nora is going to have a role in the Batwoman show if it gets picked up because why else would they introduce that character unless there's a right. particular plot point because, I mean, if Batman exists, which means we have a slim chance of him popping up at some point, but that means his villains are active, which means we could see Batman villains popping up on Batwoman that will reference Bruce Wayne, reference Batman, and so we can still have that connection. But Nora Freeze, I'm really interested because they're saying Mr. Freeze is not in it. Well, why is Nora in it? In it, right. So. Well, uh, what I want to see, uh, well, well, obvious, but... What I've been dreaming of this whole time is that we get to the ultimate way to <laughs> continue to have cool names in this show uh-huh. is by having his future self come back in time. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that way we can say, hey, he never left Thea because this is the future version of him. And he's oh going to be God. old and grizzled and he's going to have a lot of stuff that he can actually teach all over too. It's going to be in- <laughs> I thought you were going to go with, I just want Roy to pop up so he can uh, meet Batwoman and Superman for like one quick scene. He just shows up in one scene just shaking hands with everybody he hasn't met yet. Hey, hello. I am Roy. I'm Roy. 
And then, and, then, and then he leaves, running out both hands there, going, Roy is your boy. And they, and they all go, Roy is our boy. And then that's the end of the crossover. It's right. over. That Done. boy is right. He is our boy. That's our boy right there. Um, <laughs> and he even goes, that's our boy over there. He's like, and Oliver's like, yeah. And he smiles. Like, whoa, Oliver, don't smile. That scares us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're scared. <him>. Stop. <laughs> um, um, Jesus. Uh the best thing is though that it just it's such a it's such a crime because we can we could have Colton back and he could have this different ideology, he can have this grizzled ideology of the world and um but still fit into the show because he didn't he never left Thea technically because this is his future version. And then so we well, can explain he, why that is. Yeah, they could easily explain it that, that Roy just he just Thea sends him back to help Oliver. That's what I thought they were gonna do. They could still yeah. do that. Exactly. Um and the, well the fact that um, he was friend. He's friends with Tyler Hecklin. He was on Teen Wolf with him. The friends that he's he's friends with Ruby Rose. Like, yeah, uh, just being able to see all of them interact, and then just having as much as I love Roy, I'm really I'm really loving this old Roy though. Like, mm-hmm. uh, well, so you, you were saying for the podcast, Bigo, you before we knew his role, you wanted Roy to be alongside Kid Flash in the crossover. We thought that was going to happen. That's and then what that, I said. that that dream <laughs> fell apart. Yeah, really fast, really fast. Um, my the ultimate dream was like they're gonna go to Gotham, and he's like, "All right, we need Team A and Team B." It's like, "All right, I'm gonna go with Barry and Oliver." All right, Roy. Uh, this is by the way, this is Kid Flash. Uh, I don't know if you know him. And they're like, "Oh, hello!" And then it's like, building something <laughs> incredible. Um, and like, yeah, it's like, "Good to meet you." My name they is they do the same thing that we do whenever we see each other. Go, ee! they get all excited. <laughs> <laughs> like they don't even know each other, but it's like yeah. Um, they both um, they go, they get all excited. Barry's like, "All right, Oliver, just let you know." He's like, "What's up, my uh, my, my sidekick's gonna show up in a second here." Like, and then Roy's like, "What? Your sidekick?" And he's like, "Just nothing, nothing, nothing." And he shows up, hi, and he's like, ah! and "They're just like, ah! <laughs> they start they start dancing for no reason." Yeah, like, it's like oh, awesome, Oliver. Why did you never tell me that the flash had a second? <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, all right, team B. And then Oliver's like, all right, team B. And meanwhile, they've already ran off wherever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's uh, funny as hell. That would be the dream. That would be the dream right there. And then Ralph's like, hey, you guys are going to join in too. Oh, yeah, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, my God. The dream. The dream. Oh, well, but yes. Um, that, I don't, anything else? Yeah. Or is that it? Um. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's that should be Roughly good it. right there. I mean, that yeah. we pretty much covered the gambit. You guys <laughs> got your dosage of stuff we missed and shit talking the Arrowverse as we normally do. <laughs> <in this> program. <laughs> Welcome back to your regular schedule program. <laughs> yeah, back to your regular schedule program of shit talking on the Arrowverse <laughs> at the top of the hour. Have you seen season four of Arrow? <laughs> My God, <laughs> it's so god off. It's so maddening. We're here. We're here to report on the scene. It's a dumpster fire everywhere, Phil. It's a dumpster fire everywhere we look. Oh, listen, the fandoms are going wild for kisses. Yes, yeah, uh, so we are. Uh... To uh, help with our report, we went back into the Arrow Twitter just to see what it was like a couple of years ago. God. And I gotta say, Phil, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Uh, there are a bunch of people screaming with olicity. It's so terrible. It's like, uh, do, do, these, do these middle-aged women have lives? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Phil. They. Uh, it seems like they tweeted about olicity at least seven times in the last hour. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> It's a madhouse. It was the greatest because I actually got uh, I got I got attacked by a uh, Elicity fan. They actually Uh-oh. came at me uh, in the most subterfuge way. They actually tried to get uh, Brittany to believe that I was a uh, that I was cheating on her with an Elicity fan. They well, actually, they actually did that. <laughs> they actually pulled that shit on me. How so pathetic. Oh they, they've come after me. They've come after me. Um, and it's I did some detective work. So oh man. Detective work. I did. I was like, how is this connected? And I figured it out. Jesus uh, Christ. So they, they are, went that far just because you don't like a list. Because because I said something about it. Yeah. Man. And I, I did exactly what you did. No more. Hey, honey, um, I'm gonna attack Elicity, and then an Elicity fan is gonna contact you and say I'm cheating on you. So 
Just know that, okay? That's what happened to him, and so apparently it's going to happen to me too. I'm, che- I'm cheating on you with Alex, this beautiful <laughs> man right here. I'm cheating on you with him. I know – I was with Carson, my director for the film, but I'm actually I'm branching out. There's more fish in the sea, and Alex is just a yummy fish. <laughs> <laughs> He's a yummy little fishy. He's a yummy little fishy. Oh yeah. I know. I thought it was just Carson. But it's Carson and Alex. It's Carson and Alex. We're actually gonna all team up. It's gonna be great. <laughs> We're gonna team up with me. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That's that that is pretty sad though that, that they, they went that far because you don't like Olis and you said something. But it's like yeah. Look at the freaking Arrow Twitter account. It's just full of – I don't see a lot of it because I muted all the city of the word. Cause I did why that would, as well. I find it. Yeah, why, why do you – like if you want to be on Twitter and you want to have a nice conversation about uh, Arrow and all the Arrowverse stuff, just mute Olicity, uh, West Allen, mute all that stuff because you don't need that. West Allen, yes. Oh, my God. And if you tweet about something <laughs> Laurel Lance related in front of an Olicity person, they will literally shit bricks. Yep. They hate Laurel. Hater, despise her so much. Dear yeah. God. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. That's it. Hope you guys love the podcast. It's just been a great experience. We, uh, you, you know, we always have fun here, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? We always have fun, baby. Like you start like just, just dance or what? Yeah, you know. Oh, you oh, all right, guys. But seriously, well, thank you guys so much for joining us. It's always a fun yes. time here. And we will uh, see you guys soon. Peace exactly. out, everybody. Peace. Bye-bye. Out.